This video will be discussing the fight or flight process. The first question is, what is fight or flight? The fight or flight response is also known as the hyperarousal or acute stress response. This event is a physiological reaction that occurs in response to a perceived harmful event, attack, or threat to survival. The purpose of this reaction is to prepare the body to either fight or flee from the harmful situation. How does the body prepare? It prepares by using energy efficiently. This is done by activating and deactivating different processes within the body. There are two ways to get these messages to the body. The first way is through the sympathetic nervous system, and the second way is through the release of hormones by the endocrine system. There are four steps to the fight or flight response. Step one is the sensory perception. Step two is brain processing the information. Step three is sending messages to the body. And step four is the physiological response. We will begin by first discussing step one, sensory perception. This step requires sensory information from your eyes, ears, nose, tongue, and or touch to be collected. This information is then converted to electrical impulses through specialized cells. For example, the eyes contain photoreceptor cells including rods and cones that convert visual information to electrical signals. The electrical signal is then transported by neurons to the brain. We will now be discussing step 2 of the fight or flight response, brain processing. Information from the sensory organs travels to the thalamus in the brain. The thalamus is considered the relay station of the brain, collecting information and sending it for processing. The thalamus will send the information to a part of the brain called the amygdala. The amygdala is responsible for processing emotion and fear. The amygdala will assess the situation and will then send the information to a part of the brain called the hypothalamus. The hypothalamus controls the sympathetic nervous system and the endocrine system. This results in the hypothalamus releasing corticotropin releasing hormone, or CRF, to signal the pituitary gland, which is an endocrine gland, to release adrenocorticotropic hormone, or ACTH, into the blood. The hypothalamus also activates the sympathetic nervous system. In this third step of the fight or flight response, we discuss the messages being sent to the body. The anterior pituitary gland releases ACTH, which travels through the blood and stimulates the release of the stress hormone cortisol from the adrenal cortex. At the same time, the sympathetic nervous system synapses with the adrenal medulla and leads to the release of adrenaline. The fourth and final step of the fight or flight response is the physiological effect. The adrenaline that was released from the adrenal gland now leads to various physiological changes throughout the body. Adrenaline stimulates the liver to convert glycogen to glucose so that more energy is available to skeletal muscles. Adrenaline also stimulates the heart to pump at a higher rate to deliver a higher cardiac output to the skeletal muscle and that is so they are nourished with glucose, oxygen, and nutrients to be able to work more efficiently in preparation for the response. It also stimulates the intercostal muscles to function at a higher rate to increase the breathing rate which in turn increases blood oxygen levels while removing CO2 from the blood at an equally higher rate. Adrenaline also leads to the vasodilation of blood vessels to the skeletal muscles and vasoconstriction of the blood vessels to the digestive system so that more energy is directed towards the fight or flight response. Finally, the fight or flight response also leads to dilation of pupils, tunnel vision, and the loss of hearing. In summary, the fight or flight response occurs in four simplified steps. 1. Sensory perception. 2. Brain processing. 3. Relay of information through electrical impulses. And 4. Physiological response. All these adaptive bodily responses are designed to keep us alive. As a result, they occur quickly. As demonstrated throughout this video, the fight or flight pathway causes immense amounts of muscle movement and physical exertion by metabolizing stress hormones. Once the stress stimulus is gone, 
our body will return to its calm state, maintaining its internal homeostasis. Thanks for watching. For more, check out the other videos on our Demystifying Medicine YouTube channel.